Welcome to episode 51 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today I will talk about NVIDIA Cosmos Predict 2, which are models that allow you to generate images or videos from images. We will see if they are any good and how they compare with other models. We need to update Comfy UI to be able to use it. Go to Manager, click on Update All, and wait for it to install. If that doesn't work, there is a bat file in the update folder called Update Comfy UI that lets you update it manually. Once Comfy UI restarts, you can continue with the following steps. Go to Workflows and open a JSON file workflow, or you can drag it directly into the canvas. All workflows are free to download from Discord, but they are quite easy to build. We only need three models to run this workflow. Let's start with this Cosmos Predict 2 version. 2B stands for 2 billion parameters, and T2II stands for text to image. All you need to run it is in this Pixaroma note. First, download the model from here and you can see which folder you need to put it in. You can find more versions here as well. So let's click here to download it. Navigate to your models folder, then look for the diffusion models folder and save the model there. Next, we need a clip model. You need this version that starts with old. So download that one. Inside the models folder, there is a clip folder where you save the model. For the last model, we need a VAE model that you might already have. This is the WAN 2.1 version, which you save in the VAE folder. Then go to Edit and click Refresh No Definitions so Comfy UI can see the models if it was already open. No extra nodes are needed for this workflow. Everything is implemented inside Comfy UI. The first model, the Cosmos one, loads in the Load Diffusion node. If you downloaded a different version, you can change it here. For load clip model, make sure you have it selected and the type is set to Cosmos. The last one uses the WAN VAE model. The load diffusion node connects to the K sampler like in most workflows. And from clip, we have a text encoder for positive and negative prompts. Yes, it accepts negative prompts. For K sampler, the Comfy team recommends these settings, but you can play around with CFG samplers and schedulers to maybe find better settings. From the empty latent node, you select the size you want for your image. The image is decoded and then saved. Let's run the workflow and see what we get. We got this robot that looks pretty nice. Not bad for a model that's under four gigabytes, smaller than an SDXL model. Let's try a landscape ratio. It seems to work okay, but don't go too high with width and height because it can't handle very big sizes, as you'll see later. So how fast is it? Let's toggle the bottom panel. The first time it loaded the model, it took 26 seconds, but after that, it took 13 seconds on my RTX 4090. Not bad for such a small model. If you don't want to input the ratio and sizes manually, you can use this flux resolution calculator from a custom node. If you don't have it installed yet, go to Manager, then Custom Nodes Manager, search for Control-Alt, and install the Control-Alt AI node. With this node, you can connect the width and height to the empty latent node. Let's also show the resolution so you know how big the images will be. Search for Preview and select the Preview Any node. Now I can just select the aspect ratio I want, and it will choose the best sizes for me. If I select this classic portrait ratio and run the workflow, you can see the size I get for that generation. The result looks like this one, same size as in the preview node. Let's try a different one like cinematic view. That looks pretty good. Um, let's see if it can do ultra wide. That worked okay. Remember, this is the base version. If you remember, the SDXL base wasn't that good either, but the community improved it a lot. This might happen with this model in the future we'll see. So this is a text to image workflow, but how can we convert it to an image to image workflow? Let's delete these nodes, including the empty latent, since an image to image workflow starts with our own image. So we need a load image node. Let's load this cute bunny image. Now we can't connect directly to the K sampler because the input and output have different colors. We need to add a VAE encode node. It has an empty input, which we connect to the load VAE node. Now we get a latent output that lets us connect to the case ampler. Let's see what else we need. Let's change the prompt, maybe make it look like it's winter. We also need to lower the denoise value or it will just generate a completely new image. We want a variation of our image. So maybe 0.7 for denoise. Let's try that, that seems to work. 
but still not enough snow for my taste. So let's give the AI more freedom. Let's try 0.8 for denoise. That one looks nice. I like it. This model is quite good with cartoons and 3D renders. You can get even higher quality images if you use bigger models. I'll show you that in a few minutes. One thing to be aware of, since this model can't handle big images well, it's not great for upscaling or working with large images. Let me show you. If I load this portrait of a woman and change the prompt, you can see this image is quite big. If I run the workflow with that big image, first of all, if it doesn't crash, it will take a lot of time to render because it's big. You also get issues like double heads and so on. Stuff we used to get with SD 1.5 models. Plus, everything is low quality, blurry, and it took about four times longer to generate. So what's the solution? To be safe, I like to add this image scale down to size node from easy use custom nodes. If you don't have it already, go to Manager, then Custom Nodes Manager, install this node, and restart Comfy. I want the image to be scaled down to 1024 pixels, so I connect the load image to this node and then to the encode node. If I also drag a preview node here, you can see how the image is scaled down. If I run the workflow, you'll see that now I get a smaller size that the model can work with. Now we got a woman with red hair like we asked, but it's quite different. So you have to find a balance and play with the denoise. If I try 0.5 denoise, it's more similar to the original image, like a variation of it, but not as good as the original since that was made with the Fluxmania model, which can do more realistic images. With 0.6 denoise, I start to see more red hair in the image, but the face starts to change. So image to image is good to get different variations of an image, but it's not for consistent characters. For that, you need LoRa or Flux Context, maybe, or other models, depending on the image. The higher the denoise, the more different the result will look. If we look at what other versions are available, we use this 2B version that's quite small, under 4 gigabytes. But they also have a 14B version, which is unfortunately too big for my card. Even if it worked, I don't want to take so much hard drive space with one model. So what's the solution? We can use guff versions of the models, which are smaller. For example, in this workflow, all the other models are the same except for the Cosmos model, which needs the guff node to load it. I tried the Q8 version. If you look here under more versions, you can see there are lots of them for both image mode and video mode with all kinds of sizes to try. We'll talk a bit about the video model at the end too. Um, the best quality I could fit on my card was this Q8 version, which is around 15 gigabytes. I use the EX3 version. There's one without the 3 at the end. Same quality, but that might give an error on some systems. So I use the EX3 version. On some computers, the Q4 version can be even faster. But on mine, the Q8 was faster and better. So on the UNet loaded GUF version, you select the version you downloaded, and let's give it a try. I got this nice robot. The first time it loaded the model, it took 96 seconds, which is longer than for the Flux model. But if I run it a second time, it should be faster, around 80 seconds to generate. So it's quite slow compared to the 2B version. If you download the Q4 version from here and have a smaller video card, that model might be faster for you. If I try Q4 on my computer, you can see it took more time to load the model over 100 seconds for the first generation. The second try was faster, about 95 seconds, but still slower than Q8, which is double the size. That's why I say you should test on your PC to see which version is faster for you. I noticed when I recorded, I forgot to add the instruction for the GUF node here. I'll edit it after I finish recording. You'll need this node installed to be able to work with the GUF model, so make sure you have that node. I compared the 2B version with the Q4 GUF version and the Q8 GUF version. You can see the results I got for each model, and below that is the prompt I used with a fixed seed so you can compare. The 14B version seems to have more details than the 2B version and is also a little smarter at understanding prompts. I tried to get a realistic woman, but it's a bit harder to be truly realistic. You know, many models struggle with that except the Fluxmania model. I haven't found one that does very realistic images yet. For cartoons and 3D, the models are quite good, and usually the quality of the 14B is better. For this test, all models did a good job. 
they even added the frog on the robot's head. For illustrations, it's pretty good, though I can't see the watercolor texture very clearly. For the game interface, I like the style of the 2B model, but it repeated the level button, so prompt understanding is still better on the 14B model. For the macro photo of the spider, I wanted the spider to hold the pencil, and only the Q4 version managed to do that for this seed. The 2B model tends to produce more saturated colors. For pencil drawings, none seem to do an accurate pencil drawing. It's close, but it can be better. For oil painting, the style is captured, but impasto painting with brush strokes is harder to get right. For anime, it's actually quite good and can do some popular characters as well. For the 3D illustration, it also did a nice job, but the Cosmos 2B version has the least details compared with the others. I also tried something with the nice penguin, so in general, if you want more realism and detail, the 14B version has better quality. If you just need illustrations that aren't very complex, you can get away with the 2B version, which is way faster. I also compared the Cosmos 14B Q8 version with the FluxDev Q8 version. You can compare them to see which you like better. For realistic images, both struggle depending on the image, but usually Flux has more details and can handle bigger images. For 3D cartoons, both do an okay job. Cosmos seems to produce more saturated colors. For this image, Flux has more detail in the grass, while Cosmos looks more like the Flux Schnell version. For this one, both did okay, but Cosmos did better on the gnome's hands, so I like the Cosmos version better here. For this image, I prefer Flux's art style. Even though it added an extra button, it looks more modern. Maybe Cosmos was trained more on older images. For the macro photo of the spider, Flux renders the photo better style-wise, but it added too many eyes, while Cosmos added six legs instead of eight. For the pencil drawing, I like Flux's version better because it's clearer. Um, the Cosmos version looks a little vintage and has brown colors instead of just black. For oil painting, it's hard to choose. Both followed the prompt well. For anime art style, I think Cosmos can do more accurate styles, knows more characters, and can even do some celebrities. For the cartoon Alien, you can see how uh, strong the saturation is in the Cosmos generation, while Flux is more natural. For the Ice Penguin, Flux looks more natural. So each model has strengths and weaknesses. The advantage of Cosmos is that it has a 2B version that's small and fast, and it's quite good for illustrations. It's also pretty good with hands. On the other hand, uh, Flux is well-established, has ControlNet, Loras, and is good for upscaling, which Cosmos doesn't have yet. Let me quickly show you how it can do videos. I'm using the 2B version since it's faster, but it still takes around 4-5 or five minutes for a 5-second video. There are multiple versions available. Instead of calling it Image to Video, they call it Video to World. You have options for 480p and 720p, and also 10 or 16 frames per second. You download the model from here and place it in the Diffusion Models folder. The rest of the models are the same, and you select the version of the model you downloaded here. The workflow is very similar, but we have this Cosmos Predict node instead of Empty Latent. Here it's connected to a Load Image node for the first frame. So the video starts from that image. You also have the option to add an end frame, though it's not always perfect. You can right click and choose bypass to enable it and load your end frame. I'll choose bypass again so it only uses the first image. Here the size is set for landscape if you choose the 480p model. After you generate, it will create and save the video. It will be in the output folder under a video folder. As you can see, the output folder created a video folder where the videos are saved. Here are some tests I did. Some came out okay and some not so much, but with the 2B version, it's worth a try to see if you can get something decent. I tried some with an end frame to finish in autumn, and it kind of works, but on the last frame I got some strange glitch. Maybe I didn't use a setting right, but you can give it a try since the model is under 4 gigabytes. I changed the prompt to see if I could improve the transition, and it kind of works. There are bigger models you can try. I tried one, 
but it took forever to generate, like 20 to 30 minutes. I used the Q8 version, but maybe it was still too big. I probably should have chosen a smaller version. You can click this link to see all the guff versions available for image to video and video to world as well. Some have 10 frames per second, some have 16 and different sizes. I did some tests with different models so you can compare including paid ones. I compared the 2B with the 14B and it kind of depends on the seed. Sometimes you get lucky and get good results. I didn't have the patience to wait another half hour for another test with the 14B. It's not fun waiting that long. So maybe I'll play more with the 2B version to see how it compares with other paid models. Here are some tests on the most popular ones like Kling AI, Hiluo 2, and Midjourney. For prompt understanding, Hiluo 2 and Midjourney seem to win. For video quality, Kling and Hiluo 2 can do full HD videos. And that's all for today. If you found something useful, leave a like and a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to get the workflows from Discord for free. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to membership and supports this channel. A big thank you to the legends who have supported the Pixaroma channel for more than nine months. Have a great day, and I'll see you on Discord.